And here we are, week 18 of Pure Maths 1 Maintenance. First question, we've got this equation, x squared plus px plus q equals zero. We've got p and q are constants, and we know that we've got roots of minus three and five. So that means if we've got those roots and it's a quadratic, and we've got a factor of x plus three, and we've got another factor of x minus five for, for the roots to be equal to negative three and five. And therefore, when we expand that, we get x squared minus two x, uh, whoops, not plus, uh, but minus 15, therefore, P equals negative 2 and Q equals negative 15 and we're done moving on using these two val these values of P and Q find the value of the constant R um, uh, for which this has equal roots okay so we can say X squared minus 2x minus 15 plus R um, equals 0 and if it's got equal roots that means that our um, b squared minus 4ac uh, should be equal to 0. So we can chuck in our b, which is minus 2. We square that. Take away 4 times a, which is 4, because a is uh, 1 in this case, isn't it? It's the coefficient uh, in front of the x squared term. So 4, and then we're going to have c, which is minus 15 plus r. This should be equal to 0. Now I get 4 plus 60 plus r equals 0, oh sorry, plus 4r, no, hold up, um, I need to um, expand my bracket correctly, minus 4r equals 0, and so we get 64 equals 4r, and therefore r is equal to 16, and we're done. Uh, that's quite easy. Uh, next we've got a functions question. We've got these a couple of functions, fx and gx, and we want to know um, what fgx is, and we want to know what gfx is. So first I'm going to go f, and I'm going to put gx into it. So this will give me fgx. Um, so um, next line, uh, I'm going to have 2 bracket x squared minus uh, 2. Uh, plus 1. So that gives me 2x squared minus 4 plus 1. So if gx equals 2x squared minus 3, uh, then the other one, gfx, we're going to put f, which is 2x plus 1, into g. Um, so our next line will read um, 2x plus 1 all squared minus 2. Uh, which will give me 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 minus 2, which is minus 1 overall. So um, we can say gfx uh, equals 4x squared plus 4x minus 1. Hence, okay, so this next uh, one here, hence, find the value of a for which gfa equals, uh, fga equals uh, GFA. Well, I'm just going to set these equal to each other and use a's. So we're going to go uh, 2 a squared minus 3 equals 4 a squared plus 4 a minus 1. I'm going to bring everything over probably to um, the right hand side. So I get 0 equals 2 a squared plus 4 a um, plus 2. And then I can divide both sides so by 2. So I get a squared plus 2a plus 1 equals 0. Mm, and probably at this point, I'm thinking I'm going to complete the square like this. And therefore... Oh, what am I, <laughs> what am I doing? I don't even need to complete the square. Um, Okay, anyway, so a plus 1 um, squared equals 0, so a equals minus 1. Okay, and the next one is find the value of b where b does not equal a, for which gb equals b. So we take g, and we're going to put b in it. Uh, so we're going to go b squared minus 2 equals b. So I've just inserted b's for the x values and the g. 
Um, Alright, so we get b squared minus b minus 2 equals 0. Oh, sorry, yeah, minus 2 equals 0. So b uh, minus 2, uh, b plus 1 equals 0. So b equals negative 2 or negative 1. Now, there's also this thing here uh, where b does not equal a. Um, and you see from the previous question that a equals minus 1. So we can ignore that value and say b is equal to negative 2. Okay, so that's the uh, first page. What else we got next? Uh, we've got to find and simplify um, inverse uh, multiplied by... Oh, no, sorry. I think this is an error in the, in the text. So... Hopefully, by the time you get a copy of this, I'll have fixed it. We just want the inverse of f, I think. Is that what we want? Um, oh, no, maybe we don't. Um, I just... Hang on. I'm not quite sure what I meant. Maybe I want this times gx. Maybe that's what I want. So let's go ahead and try that. So I'm going to say y equals 2x plus 1, which is what um, fx is. So I'm going to swap the x's and the y's over so I can get the inverse of f. So uh, 2y equals x minus 1, y is equal to x minus 1 over 2. And this is the inverse of f. Okay, now we're going to times that by gx. So we're going to go x minus 1 over 2, and we're going to multiply that by uh, x squared minus 2. Um, so this gives us x cubed uh, minus x squared uh, um, minus 2x plus 2, I guess. Um, let me just check x squared minus x squared x cubed minus x squared minus 2x uh, plus 2 yep all over 2 something like that I guess we could yeah no that's really fine leave it like that okay so for the next one a circle passes through the points O 0 0 a uh, is 8, 4, B is um, 6, 6. Show the OA is a diameter. Uh, uh, of the circle and find the equation of the circle. Okay. Um, well, If, uh, if OA is the diameter, we're just going to start by assuming that it is, okay? OA, um, then we can say that, therefore, the center is at OA, uh, so it should be uh, 4. So the center should be at 4. Center D at 4, comma 2. Um, and then radius should be uh, DO, the magnitude of DO, which is the square root of uh, 4 minus 0 squared plus 2 minus 0 squared equals 16 plus uh, 4, so square root 20 equals 2 square root 5. Now, if that's true, then B, since it's B is on the edge, uh, B to the centre, BD, should also equal that. Now, if it doesn't, then uh, OA cannot be a diameter. So we'll just check in with that. And we'll go, all right, uh, BO. So B to O is uh, 6 minus 4 squared um, plus 6 minus 2 squared equals, so we get uh, 2 squared, 4 
4 squared 16 square root 20 equals 2 square root 5. So um, therefore, OA is a diameter. Now, the equation of the circle, we know that it's going to be in the form of y minus the center um, coordinate squared plus x minus the center, uh, whoops, let's put that back in the right place, x minus the center x value uh, squared equals the radius squared. And we know that the radius is this, and we're squaring it, or we can just rewrite that as y minus 2 all squared plus x minus 4 all squared equals uh, 20. Now, the second measure question this time, uh, we have an equilateral triangle. The mm -hmm, midpoint of BC is Q. An arc of the circle touches, uh, with the center A, touches the circle, uh, touches at Q, and uh, meets at P and R. The total area of the shaded regions, find the total area, giving your answer in terms of pi and uh, screw. Uh, okay, so the area um, of triangle ABC is half um, 2 times 2 times sine. Uh, now, what is... Um, 60, pi over 3, isn't it? Pi over 3. Okay, so that's using half A, B, sine C. Um, area of arc of, of sector A, P, R um, is half R squared theta. So half times 2, no, not 2. What is that? I need to find this distance here. And I can do that because this is pi over 6. And this is 1 and that's 2. So to find that, um, I can go, uh, I guess, cosine? No. Oh, yeah. Well, this is our unknown. We'll call it x. Cosine uh, pi over 6 equals adjacent x over the hypotenuse. So x is equal to 2 cosine pi over 6. Um, and so x is the radius, or maybe we could even call it r. Yeah, let's call it r because it's the radius. So that's our radius. And then half r squared, so half, and then we'll go 2 cosine pi over 6, which we've just worked out what r is, squared half r squared, and then go theta. Um, now, theta is going to be pi over 3 for this one. Now, so the total area will be um, half, so we're going to put all of this together. So area of the triangle, which is half times 4 sine pi over 3. I guess we can make that uh, 2 sine pi over 3 take away 2 um, what is um, so ha, um, I guess it's half 4 cosine squared pi over 6 um, uh, times pi over 3. Now, if we just make sure our calculators are set to radians, um, cosine pi over 6 is square root 3 over 2, and I'm going to square that, which gives me 3 quarters. So this would be minus O2, and then I'll leave that for a second, sine pi over 3, uh, minus, so 2 uh, times 3 quarters times pi over 3. Now, uh, sine 
pi over 3 of course is square root 3 over 2 so we'll go 2 square root 3 over 2 uh, minus and that cancels that, that cancels that so 1 half or pi over 2 I think um, and I guess Um, that cancels that, that cancels that, so we get square root 3 minus pi over 2, I guess is our final answer, that's probably what I'll do. We got there in the end. Alright, the next one's a trig question, uh, we want uh, our uh, degrees for our settings for this one. Uh, we have to solve this equation. Um, okay, so I would go Divide both sides by cosine theta. So I'm going to get sine 2 theta over cosine 2 theta equals 2. I think that's probably what I want to do. Um, and that will give me tan 2 theta equals 2 because I've got sine over cosine. So tan 2 theta is equal to 2. So 2 theta is equal to the inverse tan of 2. And so 2 theta equals, so we chuck inverse tan 2, we get 63.4. Uh, now, uh, going back to here, I think that should be theta there. So we can rewrite this as 2 theta, so we're multiplying everything by 2, so we can go up to 720. Now, if we take a look at where we've got our info, we've got something like this. This is 90 here, we've got a 63. So another one here, this is 270, and then 360s like that. Okay, so you can see you get 2 um, for every th uh, every 360, so we should have 4 results. So to get each result, you just simply add 180, uh, so we get 243.4. The next one, add another 180, because the period of these graphs, uh, town graph is uh, 180. So 423.4, the next one is uh, 603.4. Now we divide each of these values by 2 to get our final answers. So when we do that, 31.7, uh, 121.7, uh, 211.7, and if I ask the last of all, 301.7. Um, I wouldn't round until the end, of course, right? We know that from... Brilliant. Okay, so the series question, we're trying to find the expansion, uh, the term that gives us uh, x to the power of 4. So, first of all, I always... If I'm a bit shady on these, I'm just going to do, let's just try out our first term and our second term and see if we can see the pattern. So, be 7 choose 0, x to the power of 7, times 2x to the negative 2, I'll read it, write it as a negative 2 power. Um, so, you can see that this will give us an x to the 7 term. Now, the next one, uh, it would be 7 choose 1, and we'll have x to the power of 6 this time, and then the 2x to the negative 2 will be to the power of... 1. And you can see that this is going to give us actually our x to the power of 4 term. So we're going to get this equals 7 x to the power of 6 times uh, 2 over x squared and we get 14 x to the 4 so coefficient is therefore uh, 14. Okay. Last but not least um, we're going to use the chain rule here. Now uh, dy dx, we've done these ones before team, haven't we? So we take this power, we multiply it by the coefficient of x in here, 12, then we take the bracket and we drop it down one power. Now the other way, the slow way of doing it is to say, all right, we'll make that inner bit of the bracket u. And so we do du dx, which will give us 4. Then we say y is equal to u, which is that inner bit to the power of 3, and so dy du should be equal to 3u squared. 
and then we put that all together so dy dx is equal to the dy du which we've just done multiplied by the du dx and we can see oh there we go that will give us a dy dx so uh, dy du is 3u squared which is this 3 4x minus 5 squared and we're timesing it by 4 and you can see that we would actually end up with that so fast or slow way you get the same answer all right provided you do it correctly <laughs> okay team hope that's been helpful to you let me know if i can help you any further with any particular queries you have from this week's maintenance god bless